Hi everyone, I'm Dr Joe Thorogood and I'm a historical geographer at Coventry University and I'm here to talk about tide maps and how they can be used in the definitive map modification order applications for rights of way research. We're going to go through what a tithe was, where you find tithe records and how you use them to interpret them in rights of way research. The first thing is what is a tithe? Well, a tithe was a tax, literally a tenth of the value of some land that was paid to the parish. That could be in the form of livestock or crops. And as you can imagine, a parish vicar or rector did not always enjoy getting livestock or crops. So the Tithe Commutation Act of 1836 allowed a rent charge, a cash equivalent to be paid instead of the livestock amount. Now to do this, that amount had to be calculated and tithe commissioners would come in to survey the land and work out exactly how much money should be paid to the parish. The tithe was administered by a parish, which meant that it would cover the entirety of that parish, which could be big if it was a sparsely populated region, or small, perhaps a more densely populated town or city. Sometimes only parts of a parish had a tithe tax on them. For example, here in Nutford in Dorset, we can see the tithe covered a very small area. Now tithes were prepared on maps and records and the landowners had to pay for the maps. This often meant that they would use maps that had already been created because creating new maps in the early 1800s was expensive. Now this is good for rights of way research because it means that a map would be surveyed once by the initial surveyor and then it would be surveyed a second time by the tithe commissioner. This gives us an extra level of insurance that our information is correct on the tithe record. So tithe records were created to record financial payments paid to the parish. The records were produced between 1836 and the mid 1840s. In this example from Lily in Hertfordshire, we can see that the tithes were being paid to the rector of the parish. The written document is what we call the tithe apportionment and it forms part of the overall tithe award that goes along with the tithe map. The apportionment lists the owner of the land, the occupier of the land, the use of the land, the acreage, and then the assigned value, which represents the equivalent monetary value of the tithe or rent charge. Have a look at this map of Hardington Mandeville in Somerset. Tithe apportionment was a very public process and you can see these very thin strips of land. They each represent individual land parcels and every single person from the lowliest tenant farmer to the landowner to the vicar or rector and the time surveyor would be scrutinising the application process to make sure it was as correct as it could be and that they paid either the least amount of money or the most amount of money depending on whether you were the tenant or the parish. Again, this gives us an extra level of insurance in our application that this information is indeed been very carefully considered by lots of different parties. A couple more things to note about tithe records. The north arrow is not always located north, so you might have to orientate yourself. If it's a local area, hopefully this shouldn't be too difficult. You match up the tithe record with the tithe apportionment by taking the apportionment number, which is found on the land parcels on the maps, and then checking those in the apportionment document to find out what was happening in those specific land parcels. Now, just a couple more things to note about tithes before we go on to where you find them. Many tithes indicate a through route to the next town. Now, this is useful because if the route in question is a through route that's going to the next town for your definitive map modification order application, tithe maps would not include routes that were not used by the public, or if they did, they would specifically number them. So if you have a through route connecting to a different parish, which is not included on your tithe map, it's good, good evidence that it's probably a right of way, because why would you include a route that the public could not use? Finally, some land did not attract a tithe, which means that it is untithed. Land owned by the church or land owned by the crown was not tithed, and unproductive land or wasteland was also not tithed. So if your route travels through here, unfortunately, there will be no record of it. Now this is all very useful, but where do we actually find tithe maps? The best place to go to research and find tithe maps is the National Archives online catalog. 
Now this online catalog links to more local archives around the country, which means that if you search for a specific time in the National Archives, you'll not only get the entry they have for the National Archives in London, but you'll also get any local uh, deposits or versions of that time, which may be closer to where you live. If you decide to go and visit a record and actually look at it, you should ask for the original document rather than any microfilm versions. This is because we need to get good quality photographs and we also may need to see some colour on the records which we'll talk about in a moment. So if they do offer to show you them on microfilm, it might be worth asking if it's possible to see the original document. Sometimes these records have been digitised by websites such as Ancestry.com and The Genealogist. Now it's much more likely that researchers are going to find unrecorded byways than the footpaths or bridleways on a tide map. This is because they measure enclosed land parcels and footpaths and bridleways were not always well recorded, but public roads which separated, separated land parcels were. It's not the case that you won't ever find footpaths or bridleways on tide records, but we'll talk about how you do find those in a moment. We're going to focus on roads for the time being. The first thing to remember is that the map shows an individual number for each field or plot of land, and this is the apportionment number. Many of the tithe maps do not have apportionment numbers on public roads. For example, this tithe map from up to Noble in Somerset has all of its public roads without apportionment numbers. This next example from Ilminster in Somerset illustrates where tithe uh, maps record numbers for public roads. So for this map, every single public road has been recorded with one number, 1015. If you check the apportionment records for this, you'll see that 1015 reads public roads, very definitive evidence of a public right of way. Sometimes roads will have a number for a private road. On this example, we can see that the route is numbered and it is a private road. Now this is not necessarily bad news for us because if a route is recorded as a private road with a number and a route that does not have a number on it is most likely a public route. So that can be very useful for working out where the private roads and public roads are. You do sometimes find footpaths and bridleways on tithe records. On this example of Hexton in Hertfordshire, we can see a bridle road is, is labelled on the tithe map. And if we go to the apportionment record, we can also see that it says Bridal Road. Footpaths are also shown on the map. This one of Sandon in Hartsfordshire shows a footpath crossing land parcels 174, 208, 207, 201 and 195. The words FT path are written across the dotted line in parcel 207. Occasionally, a footpath will be annotated as going through to an adjacent parish that is not included on the tithe map you're looking at. This one on the screen here of Drayton in Somerset shows a footpath leading to Langport. Again, good evidence of a right of way. If you do find a footpath or bridleway, the first question to ask is, is there an apportionment number that I can check this route against? If not, it's likely there will be no specific entry in the apportionment document. It probably indicates that that lamb was not being tithed or it was owned by the church or the crown. Another thing to check is if the track is shown as a through route and if it has any colour on it that is the same as the colour used to record other public routes. Tithe maps are often coloured and that can be another way of showing a right of way by checking the colour of public roads against other tracks that are recorded. If the track does have an apportionment number, as with roads, check if that apportionment number applies just to that footpath or to other footpaths as well. A track may not be shown because it is part of a productive apportionment or land being tithed, but if it joins two public roads at the end of a land parcel, it's still likely to be a public footpath. If you think of a footpath that travels through a field, it usually connects to two public rights of way. Otherwise, how would you access it? So there's a good inference to be made there for further research into that right of way. The final thing to think about is the quality of the photographs you take. You should try and take good quality photographs of the entire document and then the specific pieces of evidence, both the tithe map and the record. It's very important that both are submitted as part of a definitive map modification order application. So those are tithes. We looked at what they are, 
where you find them and how to interpret them. This is just a brief overview of tithes and what they are. There is more information included online and you can also find more in Rights of Way, Restoring the Record by Dr. Phil Wadey and Sarah Ann Bucks who helped me make this video. If you want to get the best information for using tithes in your definitive map modification order application, there is nowhere better to go than this book. I'm Dr. Joe Thorogood and thanks very much for watching and helping us restore the record and find missing historic rights of way.